We're going to learn today about events that transpired, I would say, in a certain way, by Amim Ahim Bazman Azad. I'm going to show you a section now that's in Sefer Shmuel Aleph. It's chapter 30. In fact, I'm putting into the chat, in case you don't have a Bible, a Tanakh in front of you, obviously you're online, you can open another uh, another window to be able to look it up on uh, safaria.org. Uh, has it. I gave you the exact link of the chapter we're going to be learning. Shmuel Aleph, so it's 1 Samuel, chapter 30. Uh, if you don't have a Tanakh, or you're in a car or something, so you'll listen in. And I hope this can give chizuk to Achenu Kol Beit Yisrael, Hanatunim B'Tzaro B'Shivya, Omdim Bein Bayam Uvein B'Yabasha. That includes, of course, everyone in Medinat Yisrael, but as Benny Gantz said yesterday to Klal Yisrael, and his address to the nation, Every single Jew received the Tzav Shmona, Kulanu Hit Gayasnu, and that means we are all called upon to do our part. So those of us who are um, geographically farther away, we have Naseh Shelanu, and we send our love and regards to all of our members who are on the front lines of Medinat Yisrael, Hain those serving in Sal, Hain those serving by being uh, Ezra Chei, Medinat Yisrael at this hour. Let's learn together. Where is Tziklag? Does anybody know? Let me show you where it is. I'm putting it on the screen, so you'll see it on a map. You'll be able to uh, to see it in front of you. This is Tziklag. This is a map of the land of Israel, courtesy of Atlas Dat Mikra. What do you see here? Here is Tziklag. It's in this area. It's near the town of Nitivot, which is near Sderot, which is near Be'eri, which is near Kfar Aza, which is near 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 Oz, v'chule, v'chule, v'chule. It's just a little way off from this territory that today we call Aza, but who knows what its name will be in uh, Sham when this thing is over. Um, this was what happened. The Navi describes that when David HaMelech and his people arrived in Siklag. Now, who are David and his people? This is at the moment where David HaMelech is, believe it or not, still engaged in trying his utmost to stay alive. Unfortunately, because of a massive conflict he had within the family, I mean this literally, he's the son-in-law of the king, and he is also the king who was uh, the next king. He was already told by uh, king by the Navi, the prophet Shmuel, that he's going to be the new king. And the people around David are always telling him, why don't you just kill uh, Shaul? He's uh, the has-been king, get rid of him. And David is always saying, I will never do that. I could never, ever do such a thing against uh, the king of Israel. Um, and he is therefore with a group of people uh, who are like his, um, call it his um, a, a group of people who have gathered around uh, David, actually spoke about this group um, on the night of Slichot. There were 600 men who were with him. And these are people who are described by the Navi as being people of, unfortunately, embittered spirit, whether they were people who had creditors chasing them, so they were living on the lamb, whether they were people who uh, had done things that were uh, had made them ne'er-do-wells among their their folk, their kin, kinsmen, etc. This was a group that gathered around David HaMelech. And the Navi describes that David HaMelech was known as a person who was Yefei Einayim, he had good eyes. So it was pointed out by some of the Hasidic masters. It's escaping me now who it is. I have it in writing from, I said it, the night of Slichot, that they said, what, what do you care about his nice eyes? What difference does it make? The man had nice eyes. So they give the answer. I forget already which Rabbi it is that said this, that it meant that David Amal could see the person that was underneath whatever embittered spirit and sadness they had or anger and rage. And he knew how to channel it. And he could bring these people together. He was raising them up. So listen what happened. They arrived to this place at Siklag. They were essentially living there. And when they get there, the entire place had been invaded by marauders. Who are the marauders? Amalek. And they had come and they had burnt down the uh, the entire town. Now look at Pasuk Bet. The Amalekites took the women and the children captive. They didn't kill anybody. They took them away. These were the wives and the children of David and of these 600 families, the 600 men. I had not thought of this earlier in the week when I was on a call with Mori Virabi, Rav David Miller, Shalita, the Rosh Kolel at uh, Rosh Yeshiva of, of uh, YU, of Yeshiva Reynolds Chochanan, and the Rosh Kolel at, uh, at Gros Kolel. I was over to study, and he's one of my rebbeim. And he brought this up for the rabbis. He said, I can't believe it. 
So I said, if I have an opportunity to teach it, I'm going to carry the Torah forward. So we're learning that today. So can you imagine the women and the children were taken captive, the whole place, Ziklag, burnt down. Look where it is on the map, right in front of your eyes. You understand what I'm saying. David and his people arrive to the city and it's completely destroyed. And what do they see? That their wives and the children and the sons and the daughters have been taken captive. David and his people, these are mighty warriors, they began to cry. And the Navi goes out of its way to tell us that they cried until they had no strength left to cry. And the first phase, which for now is an abbreviated phase, there's much crying, and there ought to be much crying. That's the first phase. It was, of course, very personal for David. The next pasuk ushtei nishay David nishbu achinoma Israelit vavigayel eshet navala karmeli. But teitzel David meod. But then David was in even greater pain. Why? Ki amru ha'am l'saklo. The people who were with him. They wanted to kill David. They wanted to stone him to death. They wanted to take it out on the leader. Why? They were embittered of spirit, I told you before. Imagine now. And uh, each one was thinking about their son, each one about their daughter. And David had to take strength with Hashem, his God. So just to summarize, in case you lost focus, Tziklag is in the south. I showed you on a map where Tziklag is located. It's a biblical location. We're joined this morning by Leah Poland. We've ceaselessly been davening for her grandson. Hashem should give him great strength. It's a terrible, terrible situation. Ribona Sha'olam. We're going to learn now the rest of what happened. I'm not in the business of serving as an armchair general from Dinat Israel, and I'm making that clear to you. We're learning for the sake of learning and so that we can garner a certain strength. Nobody should chas v'chalil interpret what we're going to learn next as Tzvi Engel from Skokie, Illinois, telling the world or people in Israel, this is what should happen uh, to, to these people. That's for military people to decide, political people to decide. We have to be in the business of being mechazek ourselves, in order to be mechazek people in Eretz Yisrael, hein in the world of ruchaniut, of spirituality, hein be'olam hagashmi, materially. And last night there were meetings, I won't tell, say more now in a recording uh, about what we've been trying to do, but we need to be strong in this regard. And I say at the outset, the next part that we're going to learn should not be interpreted uh, as uh, the pshat of what's meant to happen next. It's simply what happened with David. And uh, we understand that our halachic system does not simply just open up a Bible and see whatever was done in the Bible would do the same thing. We have a whole halachic tradition. We have rabbanim, we have poskim, we have a whole uh, history that we have since the time of the Tanakh, but we take great lessons and hopefully great strength from the Tanakh that we continue to learn. If the Tanakh is not alive at this moment, Be'eretz Yisrael, when will it be? It's now. So journey with me as we learn some of the sources. When I learned those that come to the Shia, the weekly Shia that's usually in this slot, you know that we have uh, not just the learning of the Tanakh, but we also make sure to open up the words of Chachamina Zichon Livracha to see some of the things that they that they discuss. Here the Radha commented, Vamaleiki Pashtu. They invaded. Pashtu means they they arrived as invaders. They 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 overstepped. They have their areas that they live. By the way, Amalek. Um, uh, then as now, a nomadic group, a nomadic group then living in the Negev. You see it here as the Negev. There were bands of them that lived a nomadic existence. Um, they're not the Bedouins. That's another group. Um, but the Amal Amalekites uh, were, were a nomadic group. That's another story. They went with Achish. Matsusha Amaleki Pashtu El Negev Tziklag. Even 
ומסיבות הבור יתברך ומשמירתו את אוהביו, היה שלמיתו איש ואישה שהרי דוד הרג כמה מהם. You see that story now, I'm not translating uh, what I, most of what I just read. Let's just say the Radak is explaining that the Amalekites figured out where the weak spot was, and therefore they came to this place. And that's why they went to Tziklag, because they knew that David and his people were, were not going to be there at that time. And um, they, um, they, they, they did what they did. They, they, they took who they took. Um, now in the shul, in our shul, uh, Shachris and Mincha, uh, we've been reciting ongoing Tehillim Chav Zayin. That's the 27th chapter of Tehillim. The 27th chapter should be known to uh, all of us very well. Uh, we call it L'David Hashem Orivi Ishi. Uh, that chapter of Tehillim should be so well known by heart to us. We said it 50 days um, uh, um, straight and more. Um, we're we're gonna we're gonna keep saying it. Um, I will also mention, as of last night, uh, we added Avinu Malkenu into the davening, uh, both at Mincha at, uh, at the after the Shmonesre, as well as um, uh, at Shachari at the Shmonesre, and everyone at home should be reciting it as well uh, daily until further notice. Um, if you don't have a Tanakh uh, in front of you and you want to see chapter 27 uh, in English, if you've never read it in English, uh, this is the perfect time to uh, open up the Bible and to flip to those pages and to see what uh, transpires uh, in that section uh, of uh, of Tanakh. And again, I'll, uh, I'll put into the chat the link as I'm talking for chapter 27 in Tehillim, if you want to go between links to, uh, to, look, that, uh, to look that up. So... In Vayikra Rabbah, that's the Medrash Rabbah, written by our sages um, in the Second Temple period, um, they uh, have a section uh, that is related to um, interpreting the Torah through the prism of sections of Tehillim. So in other words, this Medrash that you're looking at on the screen in front of you is taken from Parshat Achrei Mot. Parshat Achrei Mot is about what happens on Yom HaKippurim, how Aaron HaKohen can go into the Holy of Holies. And it mentions there, Bezot Yavo Aaron HaKodesh. Here's how Aaron should go into the holy uh, uh, areas. Bezot Yavo Aaron. It's like, here's the recipe. So the sages had various ways they wanted to understand that section of the Torah, Bezot Yavo Aaron. And they did so through the interpretive gesture of going through sections of, usually somewhere else in Tanakh, Nach, meaning usually, and here in this case, Tehillim, and in this case, Tehillim chapter 27, L'david Hashem Ori. So, B'zod Yavo Aaron, like this, should Aaron go in to the holy? As it says, L'david Hashem Ori V'yishi Mimi'ira. L'david, David would say, God is my light and my salvation, from whom will I fear? Rabbi Lazar Patar Karya B'yam. Rabbi Lazar understood this 27th chapter of Tehillim related to the episode of the Jewish people at the Reed Sea before crossing. Ori, you're my light at the at the at the at the uh, edge of the water. By Ya'er at Alila it says in the book of Shemot, when the Jews are going to cross through the Red Sea, right before they go through, that God illuminated the night. The Yishi, you'll be my salvation. What did Moshe relate to the Jewish people uh, at the Reed Sea? They're very scared. The enemy is bearing down. You will see now the salvation of God, the Yishi. Mimi Raf Mumala afraid, says Bayomar Moshe Al Tirau. He tells him, Don't be afraid. Hashem Maoz Chayai, 27th chapter of Tehillim, on one screen, on the other screen, Ozi Vizimrat Ka, God is my strength. Mimi Afchad, from whom will I be afraid? says David Hamalach. We're saying this now every day. We're going to continue. Tipol Aleim Ematava from the song at the sea. Also, just like we read before, let fear fall upon the enemy. Be Krovalai Mireim. When the enemy approaches, Paro was coming close. Lechob Sari to consume my flesh. Amar Oyev, the enemy's words are quoted in the song to see. Erdof Asig, Achalik Shalat, Timli Imur Nafshi, etc., etc. I'll take over the Jewish people, right? Okay. And, and therefore, understanding chapter 27, it's David HaMelech processing the events that happened not in his lifetime, but what happened many, many years ago, right? at the Reed Sea, hundreds of years earlier. But he sees his life against the backdrop of being in that situation. He read it into the situation. Friends, we've been here before. You know how David Amalek wrote, according to Rabbi Lazar, the 27th chapter tell him, he said, Rebona Sheolam, we've been here before. I skipped a little part here just for ease of use. 
Mikan Vailik Amr Yisrael, and the rest of the of the of, of, of the song was spoken by the Jewish people. Im if an encampment will come against me, shall Mitzrayim of Egypt. So Loyerali be, my heart will not be afraid. If I have to fight a war against Mitzrayim, bezot ani boteach. What's the bezot? Bezot shiv tachtani shenemar Hashem ilachem lachem. God will help fight your battle for you at the Yamsuf, and you'll have to fight as well. By the way, by the way, Hashem ilachem lachem v'atem tacharishun ended up being the the moment when the Red Sea opens and there's a nice nigla and the Jewish people cross through. But you know and I know. That the beginning of Parshat Bishalach is Vachamushim Alu Bnei Yisrael means they left armed because they understood that soon they would have to fight a war. Wasn't long before who tried to attack them? Amalek. See under chapter uh, uh, right after it, chapter um, right after chapter fourteen, fifteen, and chapter seventeen, we have the war with Amalek. What does Moshe say? Yeshua Bechalanu Anashim V'tzei Lachem Ba'Amalek. Where did they have weapons from? They brought them from Egypt because they understood that sometimes Hashem will open the sea and drown the enemy. And sometimes we're going to have to get up. We're going to have to fight them directly. Number two, prism number two. I see a couple of questions coming in. Hold if you don't mind. I'm going to get to it in a couple of minutes. I just, I got to, um, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was cutting in and out. Apologies. I don't know. It's something with the reception. Maybe there's too many uh, devices on uh, where I am right now. Apologies. Um, I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep going. If someone could chat me again, if you can't uh, hear, if it if it freezes, I guess I won't even know. I'm going to keep going. Okay. So here here we are. Number two, Rabbi Shimon ben Nachman, Pater Krabat Plishtim. He thought about the Plishtim when when David Amalek wrote the 27th chapter of uh, of Tehillim. You know what he was thinking of? He was thinking about what happened when he and the Jewish people had to face the massive army of the Philistines, the Plishtim. The plishtim, the word plishtim means invaders. That's what a, a plisha means. These were people who were Asiatic people who came, who landed on the coast um, sometime in the biblical era. There were certain waves when they came. They set up shop there. And when they did this, unfortunately, they were constantly a thorn in the sides of the Jewish people. Yeah? There was therefore a desire by certain people, the Romans, the Romans, to distance the Jewish people at the time of uh, terrible times for the Jewish people from Eretz Israel, And so they renamed the land of Israel, the biblical land, the holy land, the land of the Jewish people, Yehuda, Medinat Yehud, as was known in Bayit Sheni, Melchut Yisrael, Melchut Yehuda, and Bayit Rishon. They renamed it Palestine. Why? Because it sounded like the word Philistines, Plishtim. They wanted to say maybe it's really the land of the Plishtim. That was maybe a little too close to political commentary of the moment, but just to consider that idea. Now, according to Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachman, the 27th chapter of Tehillim, oh, that's actually about what happens in chapter, uh, in, in, in the chapters in Shmuel Aleph, where King David is but a young lad, a strong young lad, who's going onto the battlefield in this contest against Goliath. Um, when the enemy approaches me, David Melch writing chapter 27, Ze Goliath, that's Goliath. Shinemar, Vigasha Plishti, Hashkem Vaerev, Vaerev, the morning to the night. Lechob Sri to consume my flesh. Vimra Plishti al David, Lechai Livet, not Besarhala of Shamayim. They said to David, a taunt, a taunt. The enemy wants to taunt, to debilitate, to demoralize. So what do they say? Come close, come close, little boy. We're going to see what's going to happen to your flesh. We're going to give it to the, to the birds of the sky. Little did they know that David came armed with a slingshot. Yep. Mikan Vaelach, I skipped a part here again for reasons of time. If the whole encampment, not just the contest, in antiquity, they would sometimes have the contest where they would, instead of having all the troops kill each other, see under World War I, uh, World War II, et cetera, et cetera, they decided they would have a small group or single contest, and whoever won was the winner of the war. There were at one time, apparently, some kind of rules of war, apparently. I don't know, but there we are. Okay. Another time we'll talk about Geneva Convention, who signed and who didn't. That's not for now. Mikan Ve'elach, he said, if there will be the entire encampment against me, myself, lo yirali bi. Im takum ha'milchama shoplishtim, bezot anivotech. Bezot, am Rabbi Levi. Right? Uh, th this, is, this is the idea. Bizkvatris, shihichtiv lana Moshe b'Torah, v'amalim lezkenim. 
It's uh, what was given to the Zkenim, told over to them. It's uh, the, the bracha is essentially in the instruction. The Zot Lihuda. If you open in your Tanakh quickly, the Dvarim, the last chapter, uh, chap second to last chapter of the Torah, which we just read in our shul or Torah, I don't know how many times. Um, 50, 60, 70 times to get through it again and again and again. That's the Vizot Abracha, ladies. Everybody could get the Elias. All the men could get the Elias. So you'll see there in verse 7, Vizot Lihuda Vayomar. Shema Hashem kol Yehuda ve'elamot tevienu yadav rav lo ve'ezer mitzarav tihiyeh. You, God, will help Yehuda. David Malstrom Shevet Yehuda. We are all today called Yehudim. We'll help him from his enemies. And that's the Zot. What's the Zot in chapter 27 of Tehillim? In, in um, David Hashem Ori, right? Bezot and Ibotev, in this, but it's the word Zot. I trust, answer, in Vizot Yehuda. If enemies will come, I will vanquish them. Hashem will help me. Bezrat Hashem. Then came Rabbi Shua ben Levi. Rabbi Shua ben Levi, who lived at the nadir of Jewish history. I don't have time to go into it more now. But what does he say? He says, you know what the 27th chapter is about in Tehillim? David Hashem Ori V'yishi Mimi Ira. I'll tell you, says Rabbi Shua ben Levi. I understand it as the episode in Shmuel Aleph chapter 30 regarding Amalekim. Bikrov alai mereim. Elu Amalekim, who are the biggest enemies of the Jewish people? Amalek, Shanemar, Vamalekim Pashtu al Negev, Veltsiklag Lechol, Epsari, Mishtei Neshei David, Nishbu, Tsarai Vaivaili. We're going to about to read that part. What's going to happen next? My, my enemies and those who torment me will be unto me. I don't want to give away the Psukim. We're getting there. Mikan Veilach. The rest of the chapter, Amar David, if an entire encampment of Amalek will arrive, my heart will not be fearful. This is what I will trust. Amar Levi, I'm hopeful that this year, will not only be heard by us now, those of us in Medina who are listening, those of us in Skokie who are listening, who are in our homes, but I hope it's this, these words will get to the front somehow, to our boys who are there. Okay. I'm trying to keep it a little briefer than usual. This year usually runs an hour. I don't think anyone's going to have time for that, not at the front and not even now. So I'll give him a You can look up Mishlei 14 later. We don't have time to see it right now. Shmot Rabba. Shmot Rabba. It quotes from Sefer Mishlei, chapter 14, Proverbs, chapter 14. This is the chukah of the Pesach. There's another medrash, another commentary, now to, on the book of Shmot. What we read till now, three ideas from Sefer Vayikra. Now we're going back to something in Sefer Shmot. As the book of Proverbs teaches, Lev yodeya marat nafsho, a heart knows the bitterness in their spirit. Uvsimchato luyitarev zar. And no foreigner will be able to be mixed in to that individual sense of joy, meaning it's for the individual. It's held inside. Okay. Mahu, what does this mean? What does this verse mean in light of what Moshe and Aaron were told by Hashem in Egypt about the notion of bringing the Korban Pesach? Kach, Ella, uh, sorry, Mahu Kach, Ella, Kishem Shehalev, Margish Bitsarashu Meitzar, Kach Shadam Samech. The heart feels pain first before it can be expressed. The heart feels joy first. The point here is it's a state of mind that begins in the heart. We have to decide who and what we're going to let in. You want to spend your time watching videos prepared by our enemies? Reese thinks it's usser. I gave it to you last night in an email. But in case it's not clear, do you not understand the psychological warfare that's uh, going on? There are tons of beautiful and amazing videos of chizuk. That's what we need now. The people who are wasting time sending around things, trying to be mafkid other people, you're working for the wrong side right now, in, unwittingly. I understand there's a lot of pain. We do have to know what's going on. We don't close our eyes. But we don't, each of us living in our homes, have to be at the front line of the media war. Let media people deal with it. Okay? I want everyone to think about this. What goes in the heart? What comes out of the heart? We have access to being able to hold it at bay and to give it its due. It's not saying you can't be mournful. You see in the story, what's the first order of business for David and, and his people? Bachi, bachi, bachi. They're crying. They can't stop crying. That's not all they're going to do. 
That's not all they're going to do. That's not all that Kali Yisrael is going to do now. But understand, understand that what we're dealing with in this moment is a moment of understanding that actually we still have control of our own hearts and what goes into our hearts, what we hold at bay. Now we go to the next piece of this. You know whose heart knew the bitterness of spirit? That refers, says the matters to David HaMelech. David had gone with the 600 men who were his soldiers to help this king, Achish, a chieftain, another story. For three days, he was not there. And do you know what happened then? He began crying. And then you know what happened? The people, his own people, turned on him. They held him responsible. He was the leader. How did he not know? How did he not see it? How could the enemy do this? Bad time, yeah? But that's what they did. He's in pain over his own loss. He's in pain over his own grief. He doesn't. He's, he can't even figure out which way is up. So what do the people do? They don't know what to do with their grief. So they channel it, rage, but against whom? Against him. So what, what could they do? Yeah. But the Navi itself testifies. Why did they do it? Loasu. They didn't threaten to, to stone him. Uh, in the end, they didn't do it. Excuse me. They didn't do it. You know what they're going to do in the end? I'm giving it away. But just here's the here's the trailer of what you're about to read in the Tanakh. Black fire on white fire. What do they do instead? The next phase, the next order of business was they brought the kids home, they brought the wives home, and they took the Aaron Kodesh and they brought it up to Yerushalayim. And you know what happened then? I'm going to throw in, because you may not recall, it's written here, it gives you the story, the version of it. There's a great simcha when they brought the Aaron Kodesh up. You know what they did? It's Simcha's Torah. Chapter 6 in Samuel Bet, Shmuel Bet, 2 Samuel. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 30. I mentioned here also parenthetically, the division between Samuel 1 and Samuel 2, it's totally arbitrary. It was made up by people who are not our friends, who wanted to throw us into debates. So they wanted to split Sefer Shmuel into two parts. According to the Navi Shmuel, according to Chazam, it's one big book. So a few chapters later, we're in chapter 30, what they call, chapter 6 already of Shmuel Bet. So it means seven, eight chapters later, is the dance of David HaMelech and his eight-foot bod. The man had lived through so much suffering. But after victory, he went to dance. We will dance again. Next. Remember when we were in Egypt? Remember when there was persecution? We've been here before. The Egyptians showed up. They said, oh, now we want to celebrate with you now that you're being released. So we want to have a Seder with you. Huh? Yeah. Heaven for fan, I'm letting them in. There's now a line between us and them. A line that will not be crossed at our hour of celebration when it comes. At the time of redemption, that's going to be for us to have our Korban Pesach. And that's what Lev Yodei Marat Nafsho means. Simchato loit Arev Zar. We're suffering, and we should recognize who our friends are now and who are not our friends. What's happening in the halls of academe? Dear friends, and I'll repeat this on Shabbos, you've sent your children to Ivy League schools. What's happening now? Are you an alum? Did you give money there ever? You not feel shame to belong to a Western culture that is so-called places of higher learning, engage in sordid moral equivalency? Now? Now? It's reminiscent of something that happened. I'm not drawing direct parallel, but certainly in terms of the halls of academe, of the great towering giant that was the German academic world of the 1920s and 30s, where many of our fellow Jews attended universities in Berlin and various other places. How did that end? What's happening now in the halls of academe? So you know what's going to happen when we win? Well, we understand the Jews are light unto the nations. Nothing doing. We're done with all that. President Biden, Ashracha. Shem should give you long life and great wisdom. What an unbelievable speech. What unbelievable support we have from the not Israel in this country. Are there crazy people? They're crazy people. Are there angry people who are so incredibly confused? There are. Let's look at the people we have to be mechazek, who we have to thank in Congress, and who we have to continue to rally around, who are our supporters and friends. And when the day of Simcha comes, 
just be be mindful of who was here for us in the hour of need. Next, Malbim, Hashelot, Madura Tzlosaklo. Why did they want a stone? David Hamelach, Masa. What did he do wrong? He had no choice. Achish was a stronger chieftain. David is the king officially, but actually he's not really the king of anything. He's running around on the lamb, essentially running from, sadly, a fellow Jew who wants to kill him. What could you do? It's a sad reality. Fortunately, Shaul HaMelech, who was a great king of Israel, who made mistakes because leaders make mistakes and do bad things sometimes. That's what we learn every week. We talk about the complexity of Jewish politics. In fact, this year, when it was in the installment in the weekly, I think it was called Our First Jewish Politics or something like that. Because huh? it's complicated and it's messy. How did it come that one Jew was hunting down another Jew? The nation said that they wanted to stone him. And why didn't you leave a, a, a garrison home to guard enough people? Nonetheless, he uh, was strengthened and he was engaged in what? Getting closer to God. He knew he was saying to Hashem, Hashem, but you made me, the, what, what do you want from my life? I don't know the source that I got this from when I originally gave the shear. I'm sorry, I cobbled this together very quickly. But um, says this source, I think it's um, Brown Volumes. I'll remember the name soon. I apologize. I apologize. An Anach. I don't remember the name. Anyway, it's an anthology. Do you know what the Sefer Machane Yisrael is? He wrote a handbook so that the Jewish people who were forced to go out to war, Jewish people in Europe, would know what the halachas are. Called Machane Yisrael. So that's a book. What do you learn? He writes here, I'm putting it back on a screen. What does he say? He learned what was in these psukim. He wanted to understand what is going on in these psukim. And this is what he wrote. He quoted, The whole pasuk here, right? Everyone was embittered um, on their son, on their daughter that was missing. Right? And then there's going to be what's going to happen next. Even if he saw the enemy's encampment was very large and was standing against them, his heart will not become uh, 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 lowered uh, or made weak on account of this. As it says, as it says, the Pasuk says, Where is that? In a book written by David HaMelech in chapter 33, David Bishanoto, he said every Shabbat. Again, chapter 33. Uh, and we read every Shabbat. The whole thing depends on how much a person will trust and get strength from God. That doesn't mean you don't go to the battlefield. It means you understand I'm engaged now in a moment of Vodat HaKodesh. Ze Sha'at HaTzat, Tzav HaSha'ah, Ze Sha'at HaKosher, to do something to bring more light into a dark, dark time. The first thing that was spoken to the arms bearer, Yehonatan Ben Sha'ul, that Yonatan Ben Sha'ul, when he was with his own arms bearer, Said, Ki ein Hashem lo shia berav right? Shem has no, no barrier to save whether the many or to even save the few. Their voices were hoarse from crying. By the way, in case you join the Shear Lake, my voice is not. A, a horse from crying. My voice is hoarse from dancing. The David Machar Kerbachol Ozli from Hashem and my Simchas Torah. The Katuba Harkach, the Pasuk Vav, but the Chazik David by Shemul Kavah Harkach. Then he went and he asked. We'll see now the Urim Vetumim, and they're going to give an answer. The Urim Vetumim. Vishivul Shilat Sliach. The Chena Yel Vasof. He was successful. She shivered a call. Nitzachat Oivav. He overcame them, etc., etc. We're going to see that now in the uh, in the Pesukim. So now look with me in the Tanakh. If you have a Tanakh, again, go to the chat. Sepharia, uh, uh, 1 Samuel 30, chapter 30, in Shmuel Aleph. I'm at verse um, verse 7. 
ויאמר דוד אל אביתר הכהן בן אחימלך, הגיש עלי האפוד, ויגש אביתר האפוד אל דוד. The אפוד is a tunic, and it's a special kind of a tunic that included within it the, um, the urim v'tumim. It's actually one of the garments of the high priest on Yom HaKippur, yeah? וישאל דוד בהשם לאמור, he asked the urim v'tumim, ארדוף אחרי הגדוד הזה, האסיגנו? Should I go after that band? By the way, do you know where Amalek lived? Nobody knows. They, they, they're, they're, they, they live everywhere. They, they're nomadic. So you can't, you can't ever pin them down because they're always moving around. Vayomer lo redof. Yaseg tasig vatsel tatsil. Pursue them. You will be successful. You will be able to save. Vayelok David. Hu v'shesh meot isha sherito. Vayavo ad nachal habsor. Vayanaturim amadu. 600 men went. They left a small group behind who stayed behind. What, how many stayed behind? We're about to find out. Vayadof David. Hu v'arba meot ish. ויעמדו מאתיים איש אשר פיגרו מעבור את נחל הבשור. דוד פרסיוד with 400 men, and they kept in the back, leaving behind, now they don't want to get outflanked, 200 men. Those people, unfortunately, were um, the people who, they just couldn't go. How come they couldn't go? Maybe they couldn't stop crying long enough to go battle. שפיגרו מעבור את נחל הבשור. ואימצו איש מצרי בשדה. They found an Egyptian man in the desert. Ish Mitzri Basadeh. Who else found an Ish in the Sadeh when he was lost and he was seeking his brethren? Who else went out to the field and said to the man who he didn't know, who popped out of nowhere, I'm, I'm looking for my brothers. Do you know where they are? We're looking for our brothers now and we will keep going until we get them back. They found this man in the field. They brought him to David. They gave him bread and water. Vaitnulo felak dvila, a cake. In those days, they didn't have great cakes always. They used the cakes made of figs. Ushnit simukim. They gave him uh, two bunches of raisins, sweet foods. Vayochal. Vatoshav ruchoi lav. And he was, he was recovered. Hiloach alechem bo shtamayim shloshayim shloshalilot. He had not slept for three days and three nights. He didn't eat, excuse me, or drink for three days and three nights. So then they said to him, Vayimulo David, lemiata, ve'emize ata. So which team are you on now? I'm a slave to one of the Amalekites. I, um, I didn't feel well, so they left me behind. They abandoned me because they could care less about human life unless they could use it up. So they left me. So that's where I was for three days. I'm one of their slaves. And I saw that that was what they did. There was a raid. Where did we go? Oh, we went to the area of Yehuda, to the Negev. We went to Tziklag. We burnt it. I was there. I saw it. I'm an eyewitness. Vimur love David. You show me where they are now. And the slave wanted to save his own skin for obvious reasons. Vayomer hishavali belokim intimiteni bimtaski reine biyad adoni v'oridcha el gedudazeh. Two things I fear. One is dying by your hand. Two, maybe worse, going back to live with Amalek. That would be worse. But if you promise, then I'll show you where they are. They brought him down. They brought, they took, he took them down. What do you see? What's spread all over the place? People eating, drinking, and making merry. For tomorrow, they will die. It's right there. It's in the Pasuk. That's what they're engaged in. Laughter and merriment. And you know what else they can see? Obvious. They can see their nebuch, their family. Everybody sees their family member. And these people with all the booty, all the shalal, the spoils that they took. Not of war, of marauders. Vayakem David. Mehaneshef v'ada erev l'mochrotam. V'onim lat mehem ish. David struck them. From the neshef means before sunrise. He went after them. And until nightfall. Till the next day he kept going. Not one was left. Not one. All that were left came Arba Meot Ish. Nara Sherach Vuag Malim Vainusu. Unfortunately, a few of them got away. A few of them got away. Yeah? 400 got away. The rest of them, dead. I'm saying the next Pasuk. Until now, I want to underscore again. I'm not delivering political commentary. I'm not on the battlefield. Chayalim need to listen to them at Fakdim. No one should just be doing things on their own. 
Um, and uh, the Mufakdim in turn have to listen to the Memshala. No one should do it on their own. So everything I said, I said at the beginning, I'm repeating it again, so there should be no misunderstanding. Everything I just said now, that's, everyone needs to listen to the Mufakdim in the field, wherever you are. But the next Pasuk, it's not just learning. This is Tefillah. We had Tzel David, at Kol HaShel HaKom HaLeik, at Shtein HaShav, it's Tzel David. Lo Nedar Lahem, Min HaKaton Vara Gadol, Vad Banim Uvanot Uvinshalal, Vad Kol HaShel HaKul HaHem, HaKol Heshiv David. David saved everything that Amalek had taken. He saved his wives. Nothing was missing. Not from the young, not from the old. The boys, the girls, all the property that was taken, everything. Everything was taken. Heshiv David. David would return. If David has left the world physically, you know and I know that we are holding in our hands the Sefer, the Sitter of David Amalek. So we need to use it now. That's with David. Hashem Uri Vishi. That's Shir. Uh, he took all of the, the livestock that the Amalekites had and he said this is the this is the life this belongs to David this is mine now watch what happens to Denuma after this actual battle. Look at the next thing that happens. Crucial, crucial. They go back to this wadi Nachal Besor, and they um, the two hundred that were left behind. David seeks their peace. He gives them shalom because they're the back line, they're front line people. Four hundred now with the families in tow. You can imagine the scene. They're coming back and they ask them how they are. Listen to what happened next. After the victory, after the salvation, came the real the real test. The real test came when David had all of this, uh, all these spoils of war that he brought back from the battlefield. And the 400 men who had been at the battlefield, you have to understand, are people who are extremely, say, fired up from what they had just done. And so elated that they have their people back. But now they turn to the people who are not physically on the front line. And they say, you, you're not sharing in our success. You're not getting from our spoils of war. You're not benefiting. Now listen to the heroics of a David Malka Mashicha, who even at this stressed moment realized that because the passions were still running high in the moment of the, the trial, when they almost stoned him, but now even in the moment of immediate victory, when they were about to turn again on their brothers, look at the next pasuk. I say this also a, um, as a tefillah, pasuk Chav Gimel, chapter 23, for, uh, chapter 30, verse 23. Vayomer David lo tasu echai, don't do this, my brothers. Look what Hashem has done for us. Look how he guarded us. Look how he put this garrison that came upon us into our hand. Now, listen to this. Instead, listen to what's going to be heard from this moment. Yeah. You want people to hear that the people who went to the battlefield felt they had nothing to do with the people who were in Pikuda Oref? That's not what they're going to hear. There were the people who went out to the war and the people who were behind the scenes being mechazek them. Yachdav yachloku. Together they will enjoy the spoils of the war. From the Bezdin of David HaMelech Ad Hayom Hazeh it became an edict and a statute for Israel until today. I have to cut the shear short, so I'm going to end with the following. And I want you to see what's on the screen. I have to skip. I had other things about how the Urim Vitumim functions, the prayerful nature of it, etc. We don't have time for that. I am Shem, the Gemara, and Yuman, I am Gimel. I leave you one last source. And the last source has to do with the Torah that I learned from the Rosh Hashiv Shabbat Haaretzion, Rav Yaakov Meidan, who points out there are two people in Jewish history, in the Tanakh, who are called Admoni. They are of ruddy complexion. Two people. The second one is David. The first one, we all know. Esav. And there are two people in Tanakh 
who end up going to battle in defense of the Jewish people. And they go to battle with 400 men. The second one is David HaMelech. You'll say to me, you made a mistake. The first group, Esav's group, remember? When Esav is coming, that wasn't to defend the Jewish people. That was actually to fight the Jewish people. Says Arav Meidan, just open up Rashid Rabbah. What happened in that story? The 400 men. Remember the 400 men were coming with Esav armed to the teeth? But you know what happens in the end? By the time they get there, the 400 men have peeled off. After he hugs and embraces and kisses Yaakov Avinu, and he gives, they have the brachas are exchanged, etc., right? Esav went home. He went back to his place, to Seir. Where are those 400 men? Where did they go? All 400 dispersed. They didn't want to be with an Esav anymore. Amru, they said to themselves, Shal shal Yaakov. We'll only be burned by the coal, the burning coal that is Yaakov. Remember, Yaakov gets ready uh, for that for that battle also. Yeah. When did Hashem give a reward to the 400 men who left? Why, it's later on in Tanakh. The Medr says, those are the 400 men who for the second time in Jewish history ran away. They ran away from fighting against the Jewish people. They couldn't, they couldn't bear it. So they got their, their just compense. They weren't killed in the battle. Rav Meidan says there's son, another group of 400. You know what that other group of 400 is? It's David HaMelech's 400 soldiers. Says Rav Meidan, this means that David HaMelech understood that in his lifetime, he would have to be Hakol Kol Yaakov he would have to be the voice of Yaakov to write the Sefer to Hilim, the Ruach HaKodesh. But at times he would also have to be Hayadayim Yedei Esav. And when the man of ruddy complexion, David Malka Mashiach, was born into the world, says Rav Meidan, he made a tikkun. He fixed Esav from the Jewish family tree. And he had a garrison with him of 400 men. But instead of going out against Jewish people, 400 men trying to stone a fellow Jew or attack him in their moment of rage, David Melech took his 400 men, his soldiers, who were Jewish people, who people who had the kol kol Yaakov, a kol kol Yaakov, but who knew that at times, hayadayim yadei sav, vidzeh sav hasha'ah. The David Hashem ori v'yishimi mira. Hashem o'otz chayayim yachad, v'ikrov alam erayim v'cho b'sri tzarei v'oi v'ayli, hem akash lo nafalu, im tachana alayim achana lo yirali bi, im takum alayim ilchama bezot anivoteach. He writes on that anyone listening to this can, should please share Divrei Torah from it with your loved ones. Please send it to your family in Eretz Yisrael at the front line, Tarte Mashma. The front line physically, and the front line, Beruchniut. And on all levels, Klal Yisrael is davening together. And we're sending strength to our Chayalim in the field. He writes on that should be Zochem to hear about stories of Yeshuot v'nechamot. Until then, and further out the time being, Chizku v'imtzu. Chazak, chazak, v'nit chazak, v'adameinu. Hashem, Yaseh, Hatov, Be'enav. Hazak, Be'enav.